Well, hello, my dear viewers. Um, welcome back to Assassin's Creed, I guess. I, <laughs> I made a, a small video of it before, but now I want to try out the um, Discovery Tour, a free DLC. It's supposed to be... Well, you can discover Egypt freely without enemies attacking you all the time. And explore the open world and all the uh, Egyptian amongst other cultures, uh, history. So, let's find out, shall we? Okay. Let's start the tour. Welcome to Alexandria, planning of the city. Okay. Alexander's plan to build his great city began with a verse from Homer's Odyssey. There is, in front of Egypt, in the sea with many swells, an island called Pharos. Guided by these clues, Alexander the Great founded his future city at the western end of the Nile Delta. Though Alexander considered this location ideal for his great city, it presented considerable challenges. Too difficult to access during storms, the surrounding swamps threatened disease and the limestone soil prevented the growth of healthy crops. However, due to the influence of his mentor Aristotle, Alexander the Great recognized that the true value was its strategic emplacement. Alexander knew that in controlling Pelusium to the east, Memphis to the south, and his crowning glory Alexandria to the west, he would create a triangular stronghold, allowing him to control the entire delta while giving him access to the Mediterranean. Interesting. The great walls of Alexandria had a humble beginning. Lacking chalk to outline the future city's foundations, architects were forced to use flour instead. Clouds of migrating birds swept down and ate the flour, erasing the plans. This prompted Alexander to seek guidance from the oracles, who reassured him that his future city was destined to feed a large population. Wow. Excavations led by Mahmoud Bey El Falaki in the 19th century revealed that the wall enclosure measured approximately 5.2 kilometers in length and 2.2 kilometers in width. It was roughly nine meters in height. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> yes, very exciting. This historic lessons. <laughs> Let's sneak up to it. These formidable ancient walls would resist a number of attacks, including fending off the king of Syria in 169 BCE. It wasn't until 295 CE that they eventually fell to Roman Emperor Diocletian, and this only after eight months of relentless assault. So, good defense. Hello, child. Oh, can I take horse? I can. Oh, why not? Well, calm down, woman. Alexandria's principal architect, Dinocrates, chose a Hippodamian grid plan. The grid maximized functionality with wide straight roads and canals running beneath them. 
Alexander recognized the military value of the city's design. The wide, parallel streets gave him optimal surveillance of the city while allowing the unobstructed flow of troops. Hmm. Let's quickly go to the next point of interest. A central corridor ran from the Mediterranean's north port down to Lake Mariotis to the south. This thoroughfare acted as an unobstructed link for commercial trade and travel between the two ports. Many of the streets were bordered with grand buildings and parks, including Canopic Street, with its impressive gate bordering the eastern end. Now what? Alexandria was most likely built upon an already existing Egyptian village. Upon its completion, the Egyptians reviled the city, refusing to call it by its founder's name. Instead, they called it Raked, the building, as a mark of disdain, which was later Hellenized into Rakotis. Despite this, the name Alexandria would remain. <laughs> Yeah, during the gameplay, I always wondered why this little village was there. Welcome to Discover Tour by Assassin's Creed. You can now explore ancient Egypt at your own pace. Okay. We have to open the menu. Oh. Look at that! <laughs> There's a whole uh, bunch of sections to explore. Well, let me first see what it's like to just move around. So now I don't have to worry about. Uh, I guess the um, patrols of the soldiers. Usually I have to uh, watch out. Oh, look, there's another tour. Not gonna do it now. And side missions and wild animals. I don't have to worry about those now. So I can truly explore the open world. Without any, uh, what's this? Yeah, like these guys. They would detect me uh, if I was near them. See what's going to happen. Already. Look how annoying I am. Nothing happens. That's nice for a change. And does the photo op still work? Yes. Look at that. Still works. Whew. Nice. Yeah, good to know. So, just exploring a little bit. On my own pace. Um, oh, look at that. On the map, there's plenty of uh, tokens, icons I can use. Hmm. Can I still fast travel? I can. All right. Well, I want to try something out. <laughs> Lovely.
There's the moon. Yeah, this is a, a big uh, tower. Don't forget, you can still use photo mode at any time. Well, thanks. I just found out myself. <laughs> Anyways, we uh, this huge tower. It's full of enemies uh, in the game. Very treacherous to uh, walk here. But now I can do it freely. I like that. I like that. Some peace of mind. Uh, can I die? I can't. Excellent. <laughs> Wee. Doesn't hurt a bit. Hello, enemy. No, cannot fight. Let me annoy you. Because <laughs> why not? <laughs> That's funny. My kingdom for a glass of water. Really? Random quotes. Well, I kind of like this. Nice, peaceful. <laughs> um, let me get on. Okay. Come on. There we go. What's... What? <laughs> she isn't as fast as the uh, male protagonist, I guess. Come on! There we go. Now we're talking. Now yeah, this is an, uh, a ship of the enemy. You can. It's not the heat that gets you. What? Well, it might, if the miles and miles of endless barren desert without water don't first. You're talking about desert, middle of the. I'm in the middle of the sea, man. Seamen. <clears throat> so... She speaks randomly, and the narrator does. Oops. That was not my intention. Just going back to the city now. Just look at this. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. Been there, done that. Yeah, I like this game. Even when the not on the discovery tour, but just the game itself, you can fully enjoy it. Just a small boat ride on the waters. A lovely under a pale moonlight. The game is gorgeous, I have to admit. And I like You can use a mount to cover long distances quickly. Yes, I know. Thanks for the uh, obvious message. I already found out myself.
Yeah, you can see some stuttering. I cannot help that. It's my rig trying to. Uh... Can I get off here? Can I go higher? I can. Okay. Well, that's nice. Can I die anyway? Hello. <laughs> so, let's do another one and call the day. Welcome to the Siege of Alexandria. Well, thanks. Among the collection of writings attributed to Julius Caesar are his descriptions of the Siege of Alexandria, the Gallic Wars, and the commentaries on the Civil War. These archives contain information on different campaigns, the Wars of Alexandria, Africa, and Spain. Each of them recounts Caesar's military activity from 58 BCE to 45 BCE. Though Caesar's documents remain a main source of information, it's important to note that the perspective is limited. It is necessary for other historical documents to be taken into consideration to provide a better understanding of events. I guess so. <laughs> Out of my way! The Siege of Alexandria closely relays the events of the Civil War that led up to the event and describes how Caesar was besieged in the Palace of the Ptolemies. Other ancient authors have left equally valuable and sometimes contradictory information. Okay. In the events leading up to the Siege of Alexandria, Cleopatra VII and her brother were fighting over control of Egypt. Young King Ptolemy XIII's regent, Pothinus, had firm control over the young pharaoh and an outmaneuvered Cleopatra soon went into hiding. This set the stage for Pompey's arrival in Alexandria, having lost his What? ...against Caesar in 48 BCE, the Roman general turned to his allies, the Egyptians, for safe harbor. But on the advice of Pothinus, Ptolemy XIII had Pompey assassinated in the hopes of earning Caesar's favor. Okay. This would turn out to be a most unfortunate decision. Yeah, I bet. Upon his arrival in Alexandria, Caesar was presented with Pompey's head. The sight of a Roman murdered by Egyptians did not sit well with him. Caesar made his displeasure clear, ordering the return of Cleopatra, and for the siblings to resolve their differences and resume their co-rule of Egypt, as per the will of their father. Neither Pothinus nor Ptolemy XIII wished to accede to this demand. While doing his best to aggravate Caesar, Pothinus secretly plotted against the Roman ruler, and sent word for Egyptian general Achilles to bring his 20,000 men to fight on his behalf. While Pothinus plotted against Caesar, Cleopatra made a bold move. What move would that be? I can see the next objective is 300 meters away. I heard music. Oh, look at that! Partai! Yeah! Oh, lovely. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks for the music, fellas. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to cut it here because I saw there were 22 points of interest.
That's a bit much. Uh, although it's very interesting to learn about the history. Let's look at that. This is where you can cross safely, I guess. What's this? So I'm gonna leave it here. That's what I wanted to say. I think we have the gist of this uh, discovery tour. Well covered. So now we're just taking a look for ourselves. Is this the next one? Jeez, I guess so. I need a horse or a camel. Anything but on foot. I guess, um, it's nice, the Discovery Tour. I've seen some things that were a bit annoying, like uh, unnecessary censorship of uh, statues with uh, exposed breasts. The breasts were covered up by shells, seashells, and um, other parts of the human anat anatomy that apparently is Offensive? While the game lets you kill all kinds of people in horrendous ways, including death by fire, shooting arrows in their head, that's all fine. But uh, showing a statue's breasts? No, you cannot do that. It needs to be censored. Look at that, this is very... Let me see if it's true. Yes, it's true. How annoying. Really? Uh, it's a statue. That's annoying. You can kill people just fine, it's no problem. Set them on fire, burn them alive, shoot arrows in their faces. That's fine, but oh no, the breast of a statue. I don't understand this hypocrisy. I really don't. It's so unnecessary. And so double, triple standard actually. It's so weird to me. Anyway. That's, that's one thing I don't like about this, it's childish, childish I think, to, to a censor a statue. Stupid, stupid, just stupid. Anyways, I like uh, the, the free roaming part, that's, that's nice. You don't have to do the tours I guess, unless you want to learn more about history, which, which is good, which is nice educationally uh, speaking pity of the uh, unnecessary censorship which makes no sense in a very very violent game where even children are murdered it's well, it's baffling it's really baffling to me anyways I liked it uh, for the most part except for those parts and uh, yeah I hope you like this one. Um, just showing a little bit of the uh, the free DLC for Assassin's Creed Origins. The Discovery Tour. So, I hope you guys have a good one. And I'll see you in the next one. Laters. Bye.